All right, guys, so whenever a company hires you to test the security of their website and make sure that there's no vulnerabilities or whatever, then what you're usually going to do first is you're just going to go to their website with, you know, just through a browser, nothing unusual, and you're just going to start clicking around and getting a real brief overview of what the website is all about. And this is called intelligence gathering. And it's not just their website, but you also probably want to check out their social media accounts, their Facebook, their Twitter. And it just helps give you a general idea of, you know, some background of the company. Now, another thing that I always recommend is running a simple who is of their website domain. So if I run a who is of the new boston.com, then what this is is it gives you some real basic information of the domain name in whoever registered the domain name if they didn't choose who is domain privacy then it's going to give you a bunch of personal information about them that you can use but it's going to give you their name who they registered it through and some basic info so check that out now another thing that you probably want to do is you need to get the IP address of their website so a lot of tools that we're going to use later on, you just can't use the domain name like thenewboston.com. But if you type host thenewboston.com and hit enter, then it's going to give you the IP address of the web server. So all the tools, um, even if they can use a domain name, you should always put the IP address so that way you know exactly what device you're targeting. So that's how you get the IP address. Now from here, what I like to do is I like to run a simple nmap scan. Now again, all of this, what I'm teaching you right now, this isn't Metasploit specific. This is just intelligence gathering so we can get the info that we need to properly use the tools in Metasploit. It's kind of a tongue twister, Metasploit later on. So let me just run this real quick, nmap minus F, and hopefully you guys watch my nmap tutorials. And let me actually do it for this. Now. Before this tutorial series, I just bought, like I said, a real crappy uh, $5 web server. So I know the IP address of this is 45.55.248.208. Actually, let me copy that so I don't have to type it again. So now what I want to do is I want to run a quick nmap scan. And all this does is it tells me what services are running on the server, what ports are open. Gives me a real you know, broad overview of it. So now I can see, okay, they have FTP, and by they, I actually mean me because it's my server, and they also have SSH, and they also have HTTP. So we can tell by HTTP that they're probably hosting a website on this, which is true, and some attack points are probably HTTP, or excuse me, FTP and SSH. So let's go ahead and see if there are any Metasploit vulnerabilities or exploits that we can find related to SSH first. Now I happen to know that there is an exploit that you can use and it tells you the version of SSH that they're using. So I'm just gonna write search SSH underscore version. Now you can actually just search SSH and it's gonna pop up, uh, I already know the name of the exploit so I'm just gonna hit enter and it's gonna say okay so these are all the exploits related to SSH version and the one that I'm looking for is just this, just the real basic SSH version scanner. So let me go ahead and copy the name of this. And again, what we're trying to do here is we just want to get what version of SSH is running on their server. So then we can go on Google and find if there are any vulnerabilities with that version. Maybe they didn't update it in a while and then, well, <laughs> it could be very bad for that company so I want to get more info about that right there so I'm gonna hit enter and it says alright I don't really care who made it pretty cool that they did though and this tool detects the SSH version boom roasted that's exactly what I'm looking for so let me clear out of here and now that I decided I want to use this tool I'm just gonna write use this tool and now I'm in now, in order to use this tool, we actually need to give it some more information. Now, if you write show options, and you can write show options for every single tool, and right after you choose to use the tool, this is the very first command that you should always type, show options. What this is gonna do is say, okay, 
this is the additional information that I need. Some of it is required. So for example, the IP address, we need to type in obviously because it needs to know what device to target. Some other um, variables may be optional like, um, uh, I, I don't know, like if you want to target multiple ones or just some like, you know, weird settings that you can have. But right now it says, okay, this tool requires four pieces of information. Now three of these have been set by us. They gave a default value. So the default port of SSH is 22. We're just going to use one thread. And if we are attacking like multiple uh, devices, like 30 different ones, then we may want to bump it up to like uh, 20 or 30 threads. But right now we're just going to run this attack on one server. So we can just use one thread. It doesn't really matter. And the timeout as well. Now it also requires another piece of information and that's actually the IP address of my server. So that's the target and it says um, address range because you can actually use this on a range of, you know, let's say you're targeting the entire network as well, but we're not so we don't have to worry about that. So in order to set the setting of our host, then we just type set our host and it has autocomplete so if you just start typing it and hit tab it's going to complete and then we need to set the IP address which is 45.55.248.208 so hit enter and it says okay we now set the IP address of the server you want to target to that now if you write show options again you can see that that setting has now been set so alright this is the IP address this is what port we want to use. This is how many threads and the timeout looks good. And by the way, you can overwrite these settings as well. So say that we actually wanted to use five threads for some reason, then we can set threads to five, show options and look at that. Threads to five, simple enough. So let me clear out of there. And now that all of our settings are taken care of, all we do is we write run. Now hit enter and the tool is gonna to run. So again, the output is displayed right after you type it and all this tool did is it gave us the version of SSH that we're running. So depending on what tool you use, of course the output's gonna be different, but now we got some real basic information. Okay, they're using Linux, pretty cool. They're running Ubuntu and this is the version right there. So pretty sweet and that ladies and gentlemen is the basics of how you use a simple tool and if you ever want to go back, like I said, just type back and now we're back to home base. So again, whenever you want to use a tool, search for it, get info about it if you want and type use and then the name of the tool and then set all of your options and then hit run. And that's basically how it's going to work for every single exploit. Um, there are some weird things for some different exploits, but that's the basics of it. So in the next couple of tutorials, we're going to go over some practical usages. usages, And uh, yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys how to crack an FTP password and, you know, some other cool stuff. It's going to be awesome. See you next time.